Hello and welcome to Introduction to Networks, Module 2. So today we're going to talk about basic switch configuration. So um, I opened up my packet tracer. So please open that up. Uh, so when we're done with today, I want you to do everything that I'm doing. And uh, I want you to upload the packet tracer at the end of this video. Okay? That's what, that's what you need to, to do instead of writing out notes. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do all of this. This is the basic configuration, so you can write this down if you want to. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go click on Network Devices and click down here on Switches and grab a 2960 switch and then go to the End Devices and grab a PC. All right, and then we're going to need to connect them. So the first thing we are going to click on connection and now we need a console port so we can get into the switch so we can configure it. So click on the console. Well, I hear that blue arc uh, cable. Click on it, move over on top of the PC, click on it and choose RS-232, okay? So this is the cable, we, this is the nine pin um, on the back of our uh, desktop. So choose that. Go over to the switch and click and choose the console port. All right, so we are now physically connected. Now we need to get into the switch to configure it. So now you click on the PC. And now we need to choose, go to the desktop and find the simulation, the terminal right here. This is like the putty we're going to use in class when we connect to the switch. So click on the terminal, click OK. And now we are inside the switch all right the switch is already up so hit enter this is the user mode now if you type in question mark this is all the commands that you could do on in the user mode all right so to be able to do it this is really just a view so you can use the connect command the disable command the enable and so on so let's say I want to go into the privilege mode where I want to configure do all my configuration. I would have to type enable. So if you type enable, remember you're doing this with me, right? And you'll be going into the privilege mode and you'll know that you are in the privilege mode because you see the, um, the pound sign. If you type exit, you'll get out of that mode and you're back to the user mode. All right, what happened? I don't want to keep always typing enable. What if I type just the letter E instead of the word enable? It says an ambiguous command. Why? Because if I type E, if I type the question mark again, you'll see there are two commands that starts with the letter E. And um, it didn't know which command to execute. But if I type EN, it immediately executes it for me because it looked at all the commands that starts with the letter EN and the only one is enable. So from now on, we're going to be using shortcuts. We're not going to type the whole command. We're going to type as many as the least amount of letters for the command as we can. All right. So for example, let's say I want to set the clock and you can use this. Uh, this, this is the online help command. The, the question mark. So let's say I want to set the clock. By the way, if you do the question mark now, you see a lot more commands. See, and you see the word more. That means you can hit the space bar. There's more commands down there. Now, let's say I want to set the clock, but I don't know what the command is. I know it starts with the letter CL. So if I don't know how to spell the rest of the command, I'll just put question mark right next to the letter CL. And it tells me that there are two commands that starts with the letter CL, clear and clock. So, of course, I want clock. So, I'll put CL, CL OK. And then I don't know what to write next. I'll put a space and I'll ask the online help to tell me what the parameters are. Well, if they tell me the command, you know, the parameter is set. So, you type set and then question mark, space, question mark. It tells me you have to put hour, minutes, and seconds. So, you type in it's 10, 23. And let's say double zero second, and and I want the the mark uh, the month is March, and then I'll put a space question mark. The day is today is what the twenty third, space question mark it tells me what year to do. Uh, we are 
2020. And if I put a question mark and it says, oops, I'm sorry, space question mark, it says the carriage return, carriage return. So that means you hit enter and you're done. So now you can see that the online help can help you type in the commands. You just need, if you don't know anything, just type question mark and it'll tell you the commands that are available for you. Now, sometimes, remember if you typed in, if you type exit and you try to type the command clock in here, it's not gonna work, of course. Why? Because it, is, it thinks that you are in the user mode and, uh, and the user mode does not have the command clock in it. So this will not be executed. Now, the reason that this is translating clock, this is the problem because it thinks that this is a domain name and needs to look it up. So we want to avoid this in case you ever type in a command wrong from now on. We, want, we don't want this to happen. So as you can see, you're trying to type something and it's not working. So just type control x to get out and hit enter and wait and we have to wait till we come in so one of the first thing we are going to do when we are x when we every time we configure is we have to disable the dns lookup to avoid this problem from happening disabling the dns lookup will make sure that when we type in a command by a mistake this doesn't happen and it locks us out all right see how long it took so now we are not going to do that. Make sure that if you don't know what the command is, if the, if the command doesn't work, most likely it's not available for you in that mode. All right, so let's type EN, short for enable, to get into the privilege mode. And the first thing we're going to do is disable the DNS lookup so this doesn't happen. So you, you type it, you, you go, let's, I'm sorry, we have to go into the global configuration mode to be able to do all of these configurations. So you're going to type configure, config, short for configure and the letter t for terminal config t and what the first thing we're going to do is disable the dns so you type no ip domain lookup all right the next thing you're going to do is you want to change the prompt from switch to something else to the location so the host name which is the prompt should be you know, you want to change the name, the prompt to something where the switch is located. So let's call it um, for us SW, SW1, switch one. Because um, that's the only switch we are using. All right, so the prompt changed. The next we are going to create a message of the day, banner. So you type the word banner, space, M-O-T-D, space, and you open quotes, and you're going to say, Authorized users only. Close the quotes. So every time you open, you try to get into the switch, this message will come up. Let's configure the console port. So if somebody plugs in the console port and wants to get in, they'll be um, they'll be prompted for a password. So you write line console zero. Zero means you're going through port zero. That's only one port. And we're gonna make sure that the password is Cisco and login means you're asking the um, the switch to prompt the user for a password so when they type in that password we are going to authenticate them and make sure it's Cisco all right so type exit to get out of this mode we're going to do the enable secret password and we're going to call it Cisco one so if somebody when you type enable you're going to be asked for a password and then the password is cisco one and then we're going to do the vty the telnet password zero to 15 means there are going to be a you know you can have up to 50 16 uh users logging in at the same time telnetting this is the telnet password so to enable telnet so now it's cisco two when you tell that so we're setting up security so the, we have a console password, an enable password, and a telnet password. Next, we are going to set an IP address to the switch. So we can always go through the switch through the Ethernet port. And to do that, we are going to type in INT VLAN 1. This is the virtual interface of the switch, virtual switch interface. 
and let's give it the IP address 192.168.10.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0. So we'll talk about what these mean, the addresses, when we get there. But we want to make sure that the PC has the same first three numbers. That means they're in the same subnet, okay? You can type no shot to enable the interface, no space shot. Okay, and now the interface is up and running. So anybody that's connected to the switch with the same IP address will be able to tell that using the password Cisco 2. All right, now I want to do hit, press the control key and the letter Z to completely exit and go all the way back to the privilege mode. Let's display the running configuration file that's running in the RAM. So you type show sh run for short instead of and enter here is the running configuration here's our enable password and so on if you look in here you can see these passwords and the reason you can see the vty and the console password sorry is because this command is by default in the configuration file so we want to get rid of the word no so to do that we're going to go back to config t and we're going to do service space write P-A-S-S, and let's say you don't know how to spell the rest of the command, and press the tab key. All right, so it automatically writes it out, and now uh, those passwords are encrypted. If you type exit or control Z, and then tie, hit enter, enter, and type show run again, and you go all the way down to the bottom, because just he keep hitting the space bar when you see the word more. And you'll see that those passwords are hashed, encrypted. All right, now this has to be saved in the non volatile RAM. So you type copy, space run, space start for short. I'm sorry, start. And now the file, the, now they're asking you, do you want to call it the startup config? That means you want to save it in the NVRAM and enter, and now it's okay. Next time, if the switch reloads, it's going to, so if you type the word reload and confirm, the switch now is going to load the configuration file that you saved in the NVRAM. Now, while this is loading, we have to configure our PC with an IP address, a static IP address, so they can tell that into the switch. So click on the switch, uh, on the PC, you can close this right here and go for IP configuration. And we're going to give it the IP address 192.168, the first dot 10. The first three numbers have to be the same as the switch, but the last one has to be different. We give the switch dot one. This is going to be dot two. Hit the tab key and you'll get the mask of 3255s and a zero. All right. So now the PC is configured with the static IP address 192.168.10.2. All right. We no longer need this console port. So I'm going to click on the here, outside here, on the space, workspace, click on the X and remove the console cable, click back on the arrow, and now we need a straight through cable, this black one. Click on it, click on the PC, go to the fast ethernet, go to the switch and choose any of the fast ethernet ports. Let's say this one. All right, now we can go to the PC and go to the command prompt which is right here. When you type in, and if you type the command IP config, one word, it's going to show the IP address that we just configured the PC with. All right, so we wait till this turns green. You can actually hit the speed up right here to make sure it gets green fast. And let's ping the switch. You type P-I-N-G to test to see if we're connected to it. Ping. 192.168.10.1 and it's not working and there you go it works and now we're going to telnet telnet 192.168.10.1 it's going to ask us for the password and the password is cisco2 it's not going to write anything and you are in the switch all right, that's it. Upload the packet tracer and I'll see you on the next file on the next